incredibly powerful, of course, and <laughs> biased, but it really does tell you not just the mass, but the interactions, the stoichiometry, even the shape, the connectivity of protein molecules, really is incredibly powerful technique. And if you start to add on to that the sort of complexity of adding drugs and seeing how they disrupt complexes, you then have a very powerful technology. Well, um, interactions of proteins and other biomolecules. There's lots of very interesting research on DNA protein complexes and RNA protein complexes. And I think we're only just scratching the surface of how useful that's going to become in the future. There's still a long ways to go, but I'm excited about the fact that we have this very powerful technology that can be applied not just to proteins, but any other biomolecule. Yeah, that, that's what we focus on a lot. We, we focus a lot on, on bringing it to the, um, uh, to, to the clinic at least, maybe not to the bedside, but to the clinic. And uh, I think definitely uh, proteomes could have a large role there because already now uh, the most lab tests are actually on proteins. They're just based on single proteins. So if we can now analyze in a robust matter hundreds or thousands of proteins, uh, this, this should give you entirely new possibilities to diagnose disease. We have to make the most of a tiny little piece of fossil because they're often very rare. In addition, the molecules that are there are modified in ways that are not predictable by current databases. So that's where the use of antibodies and other material comes in, is figuring out what antibodies to allow in these modifications and how they happen. So in addition to studying the molecules and the histology and the texture and the structure of bone, we also study the environments they're preserved in. So we can get an idea of how the, how the geochemical environment affects the proteins. There's a lot of um, influences on proteins or other molecules that might allow them to persist in bone, but those are still not really well worked out. And so the other thing we have is um, co-eluding material in a fossil bone that you don't have in modern bone that might cause ion suppression or reduce the ability for us to recover protein. My research personally is trying to make an impact in the field of precision medicine uh, and in particular we're trying to uh, solve two major problems. The early detection of colon cancer which affects about 1.4 million uh, people on the planet every year and detect that earlier using a blood test that um, allows you then to have a highly confirmatory, very accurate colonoscopy and then surgery if you're diagnosed sadly with that disease because we know that survival is, is at a much higher rate uh, when you detect it early. And the second is to be able to detect patients who are at high risk of recurrence of the disease from those that are cured by their original surgery if we do detect the disease earlier. So it's very important because at present we don't have proteomic or genomic techniques that allow us either early detection or stratification of those people that need chemotherapy or that are cured by surgery. Yes, it's interesting you mention that because uh, um, HUPO has just launched pathology as one of the pillars on which it relies for its biology and disease uh, initiatives and its chromosome initiatives. And uh, pathology is absolutely integral in our work, in fact, uh, both blood-based detection of, of disease in screening tests and uh, immunohistochemistry tests that tell you whether or not a patient is at high risk. Both of those are fundamental tools that pathologists use. So we, our team actually has six pathologists involved in the work and uh, we've been working with them now for over almost two decades. Yeah, our biggest push is in the area of big data and multiomics profiling of people for mostly focus on trying to understand health and then transition to disease, catch disease early before it's symptomatic. Uh, we're very big on longitudinal profiling, to, so following people over time because we think the biggest way to detect disease is by following people individually and finding that delta, that shift, that first period where people start becoming ill, there'll be molecular signatures. So that's our push. We try and use as many data types as possible, including uh, proteomics, which we think will be very powerful in this endeavor. 
As far as pathology is concerned, everything we do involves pathology. All the samples we collect, um, and some new ones, I would argue, will have to fall into pathology, i.e. your microbiome, your stool samples should get incorporated into that. Anyway, all the samples we collect, they're all part of pathology, and so it's a great new initiative that is part of HUPO. I think it's going to be very integral to everything we do. Yeah, so the HPOP project is a phenomenally exciting project. Uh, it's one we launched three years ago, initially at Taipei, then Dublin, which Steve ran, and now here we are in Orlando. We're taking our third round of samples. We're profiling everybody who comes to visit uh, who, and volunteers. We get them, get them during the meeting where they give their blood, urine, and stool samples. And now we're going to do deep profiling right after this meeting, generate tons of data, get it back to people, and just see how people differ from all around the world. It'll be a pretty exciting project. We'll get to see, again, how these different corners, of the people from different corners of the world compare to one another. And it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, I think you're right. There have been very many biomarkers discovered and, and obviously our expectation is that because so many proteins are used as integral and really significant in important parts of existing diagnostic tests, that proteins will be a critical central role of future diagnostic tests. Those tests probably will incorporate other analytes, so they will come from multi-omics data sets, kinds of data sets that Mike and Mark have been working with and generating. Uh, we haven't been particularly successful in doing that, and so I think that what that tells us are that there are many roadblocks. How we overcome those roadblocks, I think from a HUPO perspective, is by greater engagement of the people who've done the discovery with those individuals who can translate them. And so that means greater engagement with the clinical community, greater engagement with the clinical diagnostics community, and obviously, ultimately, greater engagement with the commercialization community. So a greater engagement with those communities and I think we've reached a stage now in HUPO and the activities of the HUPO members and proteomics in general where there's increasing recognition that the work we do, have done has served as a foundation for the next stage of the development of those uh, biomarkers.